This is W7WRX. I'm going to take a video here to show you how to tune up a Globe King. This uh, came up, and uh, some people have a hard time with this. There's a lot to it, so let's get started. This is a Globe King 500C. A couple things about a Globe King is, number one, you never want to tune... Uh, turn this mode switch with the power on uh, if you do you'll probably blow the uh, contacts off that mode switch it's a uh, it's a fault that all of these have it will f it will at least at bare minimum arc like crazy um, if you hit it a little bit slow and have enough time it'll just vaporize the contacts many of these um, have suffered that fate so if you do plan to use the rig in CW, uh, power it, power it all the way off, filament off. Uh, I probably wait, I don't know, you know, maybe five minutes to make sure that uh, there's not any voltage there. All the supplies within maybe a minute should be drained, but um, don't, don't do it. Um, so uh, n number two, getting started, turn a filament on, let the uh, transmitter warm up. I like to give it, uh, you know, bare minimum two, three minutes. Usually you warm it up uh, ahead of time. I'm going to operate it. So let's go through the controls here. This is your uh, band switch for your VFO. This model has a built-in VFO. Other Globe Kings, 400s and 500s, might not have the VFO down here. So you would be using a, a crystal or, a, or an external VFO. But if you have the VFO, you have to preset that band switch. Uh, this is to tune the frequency. So right now we're on 40 meters, about 70 to 90, something like that. Um, you got the exciter um, switch down here. Um, operate on either side in um, VFO tune. And then if you were using a crystal, you would flip the switch all the way over uh, to this operate, and then you would use uh, you would go one position up to crystal tune. But we are using the VFO. So if you flip this switch, the um, whole exciter section is keyed up now. You, you, you might have heard it. So that's how you key up the exciter for either spot tuning to your receiver uh, or to tune the exciter section, which is the first part of all of this. So now that you know, when you hear me flip that switch, um, this, is, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to VFO tune to turn that exciter on. All right, moving forward to the RF deck up here. You obviously want to preset all of this, 40 meters. Uh, I've already got this pretty close. Um, in the manual, they tell you some starting points in a chart. Antenna coupling, that's going to vary depending on your antenna, but start off with whatever they say in the chart. Um, we're in the tune mode. Um, you know, you will go to phone when you go to uh, high power to actually operate the transmitter. I have your meter switch. That's going to change the, the readings on this meter. It's a multimeter. So we're going to start out with oscillator. That's the first, uh, the first chain in, in, in the chain that we have to tune. Um, you're going to choose crystal or VFO. If you have a crystal, you plug it in here. Uh, we're using the VFO. So it's all ready to go. Um, exciter band switch is 40 meters. That's going to always match whatever the, uh, the other band switches in the transmitter are set to. Um, you can preset these also if you like, um, but I'm going to show you right now how to do it. It's pretty easy. First step is we have to find a dip in oscillator current. So the meter's on oscillator. We're going to be watching this meter here, and we're going to be tuning the oscillator. So I'm going to go ahead and, tra and transmit the exciter. The exciter's being powered up. Okay, now we got oscillator current there. So watch as I, as I adjust this. There's a slight dip out of the dip in it's very slight you need to be paying attention that's it it's dipped take your exciter switch back to operate that's it you've got the exciter uh, now tuned it tunes for a dip if you don't get a dip there well then something's wrong you, you, you have a crystal that's not um, that's not working or something's wrong with the VFO or, or so, so on and so forth um, when you're using crystals here uh, it is possible to find several dips. Uh, they, they discuss that. Um, you you want to find the one that has the deepest null, the deepest uh, dip. 
Um, also, it's really a good idea to have a receiver here tuned up um, to the frequency you want to operate. You're going to be able to hear that exciter up there on your receiver and see it on the S meter. And uh, you'll obviously be, that'll verify that we are in fact um, transmitting 7290 or thereabouts and that receiver can hear it. All right, next in the chain is the buffer. Um, same thing, we got, we got a buffer tune here. We're gonna watch the current here. We're gonna key it up on the exciter and then we're going to tune this buffer for a dip. So that's a prominent dip. You can find that pretty, pretty easily. Go down, return that to operate. All right, well, that's it. You got the buffer um, um, tuned. So moving forward, we're gonna set the grid. On a class C plate modulated final, you want to make sure that you have grid drive before ever throwing the transmit or sometimes marked plate switch. Um, some transmitters have built-in protection, but if you do not have grid drive, the, uh, the final tube can pull maximum current, whack the needle over. Uh, groan, um, you might blow a fuse, you might damage the tube, um, you know, who knows. Um, some, tr some transmitters might have a clamper tube, uh, uh, some might have a grid leak. Uh, just generally don't do it. Make sure you have um, grid drive, proper grid drive on the meter before ever keying the thing up with the microphone or the transmit switch. So here we go. In the manual, you know, they, they tell you uh, how much grid to run, but I'm going to set this particular one to about 15 milliamps. So we're going to go ahead and key the exciter switch. We're in the grid position on the meter. The meter's showing about 15, but if it wasn't, I can lower and raise the grid drive right here. I'm going to set that to about 15, and we're going to go ahead and uh, return that to operate. You also notice that the uh, the SX42 up there is going quiet because it's hearing the uh, the carrier um, from the exciter set, uh, chain. All right, so that's it, guys. The exciter is uh, is all tuned. We're ready to operate now. Um, it's a good idea to start out in the tune position. That's going to be lower power, less stress on the uh, on the transmitter as you get it in uh, in residence. So we've obviously preset these 40 meters. Um, tune in load and antenna coupling. Never turn this while it's keyed. It's got it's it's switched. Uh, don't do it. You'll damage the uh, uh, the, the the switch in there. Um, common mistake people make on uh, all types of transmitters: Rangers, Valiants. Um, just don't turn that while you're keyed up. R return it to uh, uh, unkeyed or plate off. Uh, advance the control and then key it back up. Uh, if you're using your microphone to key it, same thing, unkey the mic, adjust the control, and key it back up. So this is all preset. So we're going to go ahead and, and throw the uh, transmit switch here, or I could key my D104. But uh, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to monitor plate current. Okay, yep, uh, we got uh, the plate tune here. We're going to see if we're... Okay, that's really touchy on these, but we are dipped. Um, go ahead and return the uh, plate switch down. Okay, now there's a uh, there's a bird watt meter over there. Really hard to see on the uh, on the camera, uh, but the bird watt meter is indicating about 100 watts of uh, of carrier. That that that's good in tune. You know, 50 to 100 watts. We're just going to get the uh, the uh, Pi network here in um, in resonance. So the the final thing is to uh, move the function switch over to phone. Okay, now we're at uh, uh, high power. We're, we're ready to do a final tune. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and flip the plate switch. Okay, we're about 300 milliamps. We're gonna make sure it's dipped. Okay, yeah, we're a little low, right? So, well, we don't have enough uh, loading cap to quite make 300 or 330. So um, we have to now unkey this. And we're going to just experiment. We're going to advance one, one level on antenna coupling. These antenna loading caps in here don't really have much uh, capacitance. So on, uh, on a lower band like this, these, these almost do nothing. It's, it's not going to be able to, uh, to make more than maybe 20 or 30 uh, milliamp difference there. But let's advance it one time, key it, and see what we get. Okay, that, that's lower. So that's obviously... We can't make it. So that's that was the wrong direction. We're unkeyed. We're going to go to one. 
Okay, now we're going to key it back up. Seems a little better. There we go. We almost make it. And that's all the loading we have. We're maxed out. So now we've noticed that while we're keyed up right now, our grid drives low because we're actually on high power. So we're going to go ahead and have the meter and grid and and we're going to bring that up to 15 milliamps again. Okay, well look at that. 330 milliamps pretty much on the nose. That's by the book. And let me see if I can see the watt meter for you. Uh, that's about 350 watts a carrier over there on the bird meter. So there it is. It's transmitting. Um, it's not a bad idea to go back and very carefully adjust these. You see, I just got a little bit of an increase on that grid drive. So now we can bring it back. And oscillator, it should be set. You're not going to get anything... Uh, by doing that, you're just going to take it out of uh, out of resonance on the oscillator circuit, so you can leave that alone. But there she is, keyed up about 330 uh, milliamps, and so we're going to go ahead and unkey it, and we'll go on to the modulator section. Now, remember, ne never turn this while the power is on. Okay, um, we've already had this in foam the entire time. I never operate this particular transmitter on CW, so I never turn that switch. Um, I've got a D104 microphone uh, plugged in. Just presetting that about three o'clock, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and key it up with the mic now, and it works. You can see we have uh, static uh, modulator current there. Uh, one, two. Yep, we're getting uh, one, two, two. Oh, about uh, eleven or twelve hundred PEP over there. It's uh, all the way across the room. Hard, hard, hard to see, um, which is typical of these. Uh, for power output. They're a little bit uh, under modulated, but uh, 1100 to 1200 PEP is pretty typical. So uh, there it is, tuning up a Globe King 500C model. Um, it's exactly the same procedure if you have a crystal. Pop it in the front, flip this to crystal, and again, put this uh, switch all the way over to this operate. It'll be one less um, position to, to get to, os to crystal tune to, to key up the uh, exciter. And then you could do the same tuning procedure. Um, W7, WRX, hope this helps somebody out there.